So summer is now definitely gone here and that also means that the Milky Way core will not rise above the horizon for about six months now. As a nightscape photographer you might think, well let's just pack in and come back next year. No! no. Please do not do that because there is so much to look forward to the coming months. Let me show you 7 ideas for spectacular nightscape photography. Good evening and welcome back to the channel. If you are new, also welcome of course. My name is Jeroen and on my Starscape channel I share my nightscape astrophotography adventures with you guys. The first thing which you can start photographing right away is the Great Rift region of the Milky Way. And the Great Rift region of the Milky Way sits right on top or above the Milky Way core region. It is not as bright but it is a super defi uh, defined very contrasty region. Because there is a yeah, sort of dark dust lane running right through it uh, which blocks the light of the Milky Way. And it makes it I think a very underrated, uh, beautiful target to shoot. It sits uh, low on the horizon on the southwest western skies uh, from uh, about September until November. Winter is coming and that also means that Orion is coming. And I am getting very enthusiastic about that because I think Orion is the most beautiful, at least the most recognizable star constellation of our skies. And uh, Orion sits in uh, yeah, the sort of winter circle asterism of stars, uh, which all contain uh, very bright and recognizable stars in the night sky, which is only fully above the horizon during winter time. Uh, Orion will uh, be above the horizon uh, yeah, actually the whole coming six months, but it starts uh, yeah, rising very early in the morning and as we approach winter time, more of a November, December time, it will rise earlier in the evening, which for me at least is a more relaxed time to shoot it. Um, you can uh, shoot Orion with a regular stock camera uh, because it is beautiful, but it also really helps helps uh, if you have an astro modified camera uh, just to get out all those yeah, beautiful red nebulae which uh, lie around the star constellation. I've also made a whole video focusing on Orion and I'll link it uh, up somewhere here. <laughs> The third thing to look forward to is the Cygnus region of the Milky Way. The Cygnus region of the Milky Way lies uh, above the Great Rift region of the Milky Way. It is not as defined as the Great Rift region, but it is still pretty bright. Uh, yeah, for the rest it's a bit more subtle, a bit more diffuse if you will. Um, it's also home to uh, one of the, the most bright H alpha nebulae uh, uh, of our skies, which is the North America Nebula. So it helps if you have an astro modified camera. But let let me assure you, a normal uh, not modified camera will also capture it beautifully. Also try uh, to make some uh, deepscape uh, 50 millimeters or even deeper uh, photographs of this region. Uh, I've also done that uh, at the lighthouse, I'll uh, pop up the shot here. And yeah, you can see that the H alpha nebula are pretty bright. Um, yeah, for a nightscape image the Cygnus region of the Milky Way will be in a good position from around November I think until January where it sits really low on the horizon so you can include some nice foreground compositions. So number four is one uh, I am uh, looking forward to even more than all those Milky Way regions and those are meteor showers. Uh, this month in October we will have uh, the Taurids and the Orionid meteor showers, but the one I'm looking forward to the most is the Geminids meteor shower. Last year uh, I've also photographed and filmed uh, the Geminids and that was one of the most crazy mind-blowing experiences of my uh, astrophotography career. <laughs> um, yeah, the Geminids meteor shower will be, uh, the peak will be late December and uh, it also falls uh, with a new moon. So that means uh, that the moon will not interfere with the visibility of, uh, of the meteors. So yeah, the meteor showers, uh, they are coming. <laughs> As the colder months are approaching, we can also see that the Pleiades open star cluster uh, is rising into our night sky again. Uh, I think uh, yeah, it is a really typical for winter. Uh, it's beautiful to photograph uh, at a wide angle lens, but I think especially if you go a bit deeper, say for example 50 millimeters or even deeper, you can make some really great photos of these seven sisters as they also call it. Also a really good deep sky object, but I've also made some deep scape uh, photographs and also some wide angle photographs including this star cluster. And I think it's just something different 
compared uh, to the, all, yeah, all those Milky Way shots, but it's still very recognizable and worth shooting. For number six, we are looking to the Milky Way again. I just can't get rid of the Milky Way because it's too good. Um, from November uh, or December, more or less, we uh, can shoot a panorama arch and not the panorama arch you have probably seen, but the winter arch. And uh, that is a part of the Milky Way, which is not super bright, but still beautiful. It uh, goes from the north uh, and the highest point of the arch is in the west and then to the south. And it includes uh, the star constellation Orion, for example. Uh, we have uh, Cassiopeia in there. Uh, the Andromeda galaxy will be in there. And we will also see the very bright, yeah, it appears as a star, but it's a planet, of course, Jupiter, uh, also being a part of that Milky Way arch this year. So uh, yeah, um, it's a bit of a challenge because it's, uh, yeah, you need a bit more post-processing or very dark skies uh, to get yeah, some more detail out but I've uh, made some great shots I think last year and I will definitely try to improve on those so really looking forward to shooting that Milky Way panorama arch of the winter skies. And last but definitely not least is the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights. Uh, of course, we are approaching solar maximum, which means that the sun is getting more and more active. And it also means more chances for Aurora Borealis. And uh, we are already seeing some very high activity this year. Uh, back in February, uh, I have shot uh, yeah, have a beautiful display of Northern Lights here in the Netherlands at 52 degrees north, which is very rare. And um, just one or two weeks ago, I've also shot with my phone from my window because I wasn't that location. Uh, another beautiful display with uh, red uh, pillars in the sky and yeah it's getting less and less unique but I'm really excited uh, and hope to hopefully shoot more of the Aurora Borealis this year. Of course you guys in the Nordics, uh, Scandinavia and such have a big advantage but uh, the last um, CME uh, which is a uh, coronal mass ejection I think well at least huge activity of solar, uh, huge solar activity uh, was uh, seen as far south uh, as I think Slovenia, Switzerland, I've even seen photos. So really looking forward to that. So what are you waiting for? Unpack your bags right now and go out, at least if there are no clouds, because there are so much more opportunities for beautiful nightscapes to be had the coming months. And I am really curious what you are looking forward to the most. Please share your ideas in the comments below. And for now, I thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.